All blockbuster Hollywood movies have these black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. So what exactly are they hiding? Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Nick and welcome back to another episode of Technical. It's the show where we talk tech. And recently I've been watching a lot of movies. I mean, I'm a filmmaker. It's kind of what I do. I watch movies and then I make movies. But one thing that always struck me as odd were these weird black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're thick and sometimes they're thin. And sometimes they show up on the sides of the screen instead. So what exactly is going on here? Well, in order to understand why Hollywood movies and cinematic YouTube videos have these black bars in them, we first need to discuss aspect ratios. Aspect ratios can be defined as the relationship between the width of an image to its height. Or in other words, how wide an image is. And this gets expressed as a fraction, which means, yes, we are going to have to do a little bit of math. But don't be scared, we'll make it easy. Let's start with the simplest aspect ratio to understand, one by one. The width of the image is equal to the height of the image, so a square. Squares can be pretty useful. They're a relatively balanced image and they can be displayed on a number of devices without looking too weird. And if you've been on the social internet long enough, like I have, you'll remember a time when Instagram only allowed square images. Got them old. Now let's change it up a little bit. If we double the width of our image, we'll get a two by one image. And so you can see how changing the width of our image not only changes how it looks, but also how it feels. And there are plenty of aspect ratios to choose from. Technically, there's an infinite amount because you can just change the shape to be whatever size you want it to be. But some popular ones include the one by one square from before, two by one, doubling its width, three by two, which is the size of most digital camera sensors, four by five, which is a pretty popular photography size, 16 by nine for more modern digital video and screens, and 2.39 by one for the classic widescreen Hollywood look. And yes, I am skipping over a bunch of others for the sake of time. Just remember that orientation here matters. An 18 by nine image is different than a nine by 18 image. Remember, it's always width, then height. And it's a fraction, so we'll have to simplify. Our 18 by nine image is really a two by one image. Side note, aspect ratios tell you nothing about the resolution of an image. You could have really high quality four by three images or really low quality 16 by nine images, or vice versa. Remember, aspect ratios tell you about the shape of the image, not how many pixels are in it. So why do Hollywood movies have these black bars? Let's take a classic Hollywood movie. It's probably filmed in a 2.39 by one aspect ratio, a pretty rectangular rectangle. But most consumer screens like laptops and TVs are in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, a more squarish rectangle. So if your screen is tall and your content is wide, you're going to end up with mismatched aspect ratios. Or if your content is tall and your screen is wide, Again, you're going to end up with mismatched aspect ratios. And this goes for any fitting issue with mismatched aspect ratios, like displaying a four by three image on a 16 by nine screen, or any combination of these wacky numbers that I've been throwing out this whole video. If the content's aspect ratio don't match the screen's aspect ratio, then you're going to run into a fitting issue. So how do we fix this? Well, we really only have three options. The first option is to fit the image onto the screen. This will show you all of the content, but you're going to run into those black bars. If your content's too tall, the black bars will be on the sides of the screen. If your content's too wide for the screen, you'll end up with the black bars on the top and bottom. These black bars are also called letterboxing. Our second option is to fill the screen, essentially zooming in. This will eliminate the black bars and give you more screen real estate, but you're going to be losing some of the content too. This used to be a bigger issue with DVDs. They would throw up a warning saying something like, this content has been formatted to fit your screen or something like that. And what this really meant was that they were zooming into the image to fill your screen, but you'd also be losing some of the content in the process. If you watch a 2.39 by one movie on a 16 by nine screen zoomed in, you're going to lose about 25% of the movie. Our third and final option is to stretch the image. This is bad. Don't do this. <laughs> Look, I think it's really easy to look at Hollywood movies and think that by chopping off the top and bottom of your screen, you're gonna end up with somehow a nicer image. But it's important to remember that pictures and videos come in all shapes and sizes. Different aspect ratios serve different purposes and the shape of your sequence is something to seriously study. Aspect ratios are just another tool in the filmmaker's toolkit. Use it to your advantage. And remember, there's no one size fits all when it comes to filmmaking. Just find something that helps to tell your story. Well, that's it for this video. Did I leave something out or get something wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. Put my sources in the description so you can fact check me. And while you're down there, make sure you like the video, ring that bell for notifications, and subscribe so you don't miss another video. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.
Bonus fact, by using masking, you can use letterboxing to fake a 3D effect. It's pretty cool.